Good evening, uh, YouTube users. Basically, I thought I'd uh, bring a bit of mint action to you. Uh, I've been messing around with it a little bit today. Had some problems with themes and whatnot after I installed the VirtualBox guest X11 drivers. Anyway, I've done a reinstall of Linux Mint, fresh install on um, VirtualBox, and we'll have to see how theming goes. But fingers crossed, everything will go okay. Anyway, uh, Linux Mint is not all about the themes. As I'm sure a number of you might know, it's a um, and it's a, virtually a derivative of um, Ubuntu Linux, which in turn is a derivative of Debian GNU slash Linux. So, of course, all of them based on GNU slash Linux, although Ubuntu likes to term them and call themselves Ubuntu Linux. Anyway, without further ado, uh, we'll take a look at Linux Mint 11. Okay, just give it a sec to run itself up. Might as well maximise that. Actually, that has just made a little boo-boo, but that's actually a good thing for me. It's a bit serendipitous. As you can see, this is actually the live disk. It comes on a DVD if it uh, has the extra Java and Flash stuff. I think all the uh, codecs and all that other stuff. Anyway, see here, start Linux Mint. We can do a compatibility. Here's the interesting one. I haven't noticed this on Ubuntu before, but check the integrity of DVD. This is something that I've seen on Fedora, and I don't know if they've grabbed that from Fedora, that idea. But it sounds like a great idea. I've used that function before. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to stop that little one there, unmount that uh, disk, and just reset. It wasn't a real disk anyway, it was just an image. And we'll try again. And hopefully, we'll get it right this time. There you go. You see it's ignored... Um, well, it hasn't ignored Grub. I mean, Grub was always required there, but... Um, or any other one too, Lilo you could use, I guess, technically. But um, anyway, the bootloader has sort of um, made it look like it, it... It's hidden itself. It, it looks like it doesn't exist. So something just not to confuse users too much. Uh, noting that uh, Linux Mint is really primarily targeted, I think, at the same market that um, Ubuntu is, and that is the, the less tech-savvy people out there or the people who just might be tech-savvy but just want an easier time um, running a standardised um, Linux and GNU based operating system. So as it's coming up, Xorgs just started then. It's not too bad uh, in the virtual box. We're only running it uh, in 5.12 mega RAM. So anyway, just and you can see you presented with this nice, nice little display, nice little theming down the bottom here. And that's that's really nice touch um, about Linux Mint. And you don't need to guess my password because it's just a virtual machine. It's just password. Don't use that on my uh, production machines or anything. <sighs> anyway. Well, production machine. I mean, I've got a couple of bits and bobs around here, like um, this KDE thing here, and I've got uh, used Debian as a standardised operating environment. Just waiting for this to uh, finish up loading. Of course, in the virtual machine, it's a little bit slower. Now, look at that. I think we've got this nasty little creep in uh, with this uh, theming. I don't think it's happened again. This is a fresh install, mind you guys. So, I don't know if it's VirtualBox playing silly buggers with the, uh, you know, there's a, a 1 or a 0 going the wrong direction or something like that. But, uh, look, anyway, you guys can see the screenshots on um, on Google or even on Linux Mint page or something like that. You see that it shows this nice little dialogue. And this is actually the typical style of the icons. The icons are quite pretty. Pretty. It's really a shame that I haven't been able to get it to run in virtual box the way it was always intended. Anyway, we'll just close that. Now, uh, nice fresh uh, wallpaper we've got there. Metallic wallpaper. A little bit different from the last one, which is more like a metal grid with Linux Mint 10 um, on it. Your usual suspects here, computer and uh, home. We've got the menu, which we'll come to in a second, and we've got the show desktop um, button there. Uh, we're being notified that we've got some updates uh, available, 69 meg of updates, so that's where we're at at the moment. Of course, if you leave it for a while to install Linux Mint, uh, you'll find you have even more updates, which I've had before. I've installed Ubuntu you know, three months in or something like that, and you end up in with uh, a couple of hundred uh, meg of, of updates. Um, here we've got the network manager as we're always familiar with 
uh, and volume control it's very simple now we've got this little customized thing which I believe is from uh, Canonical like they've set this up I don't think that's a default set up there and of course we've got the normal calendar right let's go into the fun stuff it might take a little moment okay you got some favorites here web browser Firefox is quite typically installed on a lot of distributions but uh, surprisingly of course well, not surprisingly for Mint, but those people have, people who haven't used Mint, uh, Thunderbird's installed. I like Thunderbird. I prefer it over the uh, default uh, evolution, uh, GNOME default evolution. We've got Pigeon here as well, which um, yeah is uh, installed instead of uh, Empathy. And we've got the new Banshee player. It used to be Rhythmbox, but now Banshee Banshee's in there. It's based on Mono. Some people might have some political problems with that. I think Mono is a bit dangerous, but um, that said, other people don't, so therefore we take their advice and have it installed on some distros. Um, the normal suspects here, you know, calendar, sound, text, cal uh, calculator, I'm sure you can read all that stuff. You can change the resolution in there. It's very handy, actually, in Debian, this monitors thing, because I've had issues with the Novoo driver not being able to do dual, uh, dual head very well, and so that's been able to help me a lot. Okay, so let's have a look at all applications. Right, well, I'm going to accessories first. I've got GIMP, uh, GThumb, and I'm not going to go through a lot of these unless it's uh, something new or, or exciting. Library Office, which is the uh, new um, fork of OpenOffice. Simple Scan, Firefox, Giver. This is something, this is, uh, you can share, oh, I'll go back to that one, where are you there? Give up. This is interesting because I found that it apparently can do some file syncing across the network quite easily with this Giver. Giver, I think it's Giver. As I said, Pigeon before, we've got Sun installed by Sun Java installed by default. I have some issues with Sun Java using a program called Jin. It tends to crash it occasionally. I found it works perfectly with um, Iced T, which of course is um, created from uh, OpenJD. Well, not created. Uh, sorry, it's uh, attached to. Open JDK and get through the proprietary bits. We've um, got Thunderbird, as I mentioned before, transmission, which is the BitTorrent client. So it's a bit plain Jane. We'll have a look at that uh, transmission. It's a little bit, well, I know, of course, it looks plain Jane without the theming. Um, I didn't mean to quit that, sorry. Let's uh, get that up again. I'll accept. Yeah, fair enough. Anyway. Uh, a bit of a warning there about copyright infringement, or, you know, no, that sort of thing. Anyway, it's, it is pretty plain Jane, but it performs the function it needs to, which is uh, getting getting files. Uh, XChat, I don't know if a lot of you guys use XChat, but yes, it's the XChat, and they've set it up, actually, it seems to, by default, to join the Mint channel, which is very handy if you want some help. So, although I don't really think I need much help with Mint, it seems to be quite straightforward. Uh, this is good. I've noticed in Ubuntu you might not necessarily have Base installed. And Base has given me some issues before. Um, that's LibreOffice Base rather than the uh, OpenOffice Base. It's just given me some issues before, in fact, uh, warranting me using Debian's uh, OpenOffice instead. It's got a nice little splash screen. And it'll come up in a second. Of course, it's going to run slower on 5.12 and a big... Uh, Office applications tend to use a fair bit of RAM, don't they? Anyway, yeah, you can do all this sort of thing here. But anyway, it was in in the navigation side of things when you're navigating through. Uh, you had actually you had to explicitly bring up the navigation menu, which unlike OpenOffice, oh, which uh, yeah, unlike OpenOffice, is a bit of an inconvenience because OpenOffice uh, did it for you automatically, brought it up each time. The LibreOffice writer. Let's have a look at the icon theme there. There's something I like to change. Um, when I uh, use uh, OpenOffice or LibreOffice is that icon theme because some of the icon themes are ghastly so I'll we'll just get that to come up excellent um, and that is really not a very nice icon theme you can install a galaxy theme and then go into tools options this is just a little side note anyway guys we'll come to this we'll probably come back to this in a second anyway but you go to view and see it's not in there so we'll just get out of this anyway get out of that. Right, and I'll show you how in a minute in how to deal with that problem. Sound and video, once again I told you Banshee is the new one, Brazero, that's pretty common. Gnome mPlayer, I don't really see that that much these days. Of course you've got um, our Totem, but they're calling it Movie Player, it's really Totem. 
sound recorder and this this is surprising I don't see this too often on many distros but it's the first thing I install virtually in every distro which is VLC media play it's pretty much the I think they say it's the um, Swiss Army knife of video I'm playing playing video and I think it does a bit of transcoding as well comp is fusion icon that's just a startup compositing uh, we should start from the start shouldn't we additional drivers so you get your proprietary drivers there if that's your way of doing things uh, what's this apt Oh, create an installation disk. That's very nice, isn't it? Apt on CD. Um, I wonder if that's to make actually a live CD. Perhaps. Not sure. Anyway, backup tool. Yeah, this will be the Mint backup tool which they recommend you use. By the way, if you uh, want to update from uh, version uh, 10 to 11, there are very interesting ways of doing that by update, uh, changing your um, uh, repositories, your sources, but uh, not recommended apparently. As I said, Compass Fusion for compositing, disk utility, that's just to check how much space you've got on, uh, on your disk. Um, domain blocker, well, it seems to be like a bit of a net nanny sort of style of things. Uh, firewall configuration, I think you guys know what that's all about. And what else have we got? Preferences. Appearance, and as I said, that appearance thing, we'll just see if that works now. I don't know why that theme has decided to crash. That used to happen a little bit on Debian too. Not Debian number two, as in Debian also. Uh, try and click away. It hasn't really done anything, except for change that. And change it back, and nothing. Sometimes it used to bring that up again on Debian, but no good. Let's have a look at those back backgrounds. Not too worried about fonts, but usually the background is something nice to look at. And here it goes, it decides very slowly to, to change that theme anyway. It's no matter. While that's doing that, we'll just move on a little bit, if it'll let me, or not. I think I'm going to have to seriously consider st uh, installing to the uh, hardware, to the metal soon, because um, I've been noticing that VirtualBox isn't really cutting as far as speed these days. I should try KVM before I do all that. <coughs> uh, we're in preferences. Assistive technology, so it's just um, ease of use for people who have... Uh, difficulty using computers. Uh, comp is config settings. Uh, that's something that you don't always see installed in distros. They tend to give you some default settings and then f that used to happen in Ubuntu, but these guys have been kind enough to give you that. Desktop settings, yes. I haven't used that before actually. And this background seems to be... there are some... Not yeah, here we go. It's taken its sweet time. Oh, it seems that we can show up some icons. That's very interesting. I haven't seen. Yeah, it just mean it might be my ignorance, but I haven't seen that before. That's very handy. We can change some backgrounds here. They're very pretty, aren't they? What are they? Oh, okay, just different resolution, no doubt. Oh, what's going on there? JPEG versus. Okay. Anyway, hmm. let's go and. So we've got some keyboard settings there, main menu settings. I think you guys know all this sort of stuff. Power management, very handy if you don't like how your screen shuts down after a certain time. Screensaver also has those power settings you can get access to. Startup applications. Yeah. Uh, interesting to note that GDM doesn't have a, a settings configurator here anymore. It's been obviated. So anyway, that's... um. That's pretty much the Linux Mint side of things there, what it's got in it. Administration, I just wanted to show you something. As this will serve two, two purposes. Manage software. Software manager, there we go. So we'll just wait that, for that. I'm going to show you how to solve that little uh, problem with those ugly icons. Uh, maybe it's just me. Look at that. Notice how this is nice and cute. This is what the icons usually look like. It's a very pretty operating system when it's working properly. Unfortunately, I uh, haven't been able to get that theming to work properly. As they rightly say too, there are over 30,000 um, packages available in the package manager. So, type in the word galaxy and this, you know, you, you see these ni nice icons anyway. Oh, these aren't so nice, but the ones that they normally see, that's nice. There. Libre Office style galaxy. Well, I'll grab that one. We'll install that one. Is 
This is just to show you. I mean, you know, you, what is there to show you really about about mint? I think that a lot of you guys will know a fair bit about it. It's just asking for authentication. Shouldn't take too long. Download should be fairly light. Oh, here we go, 2 meg to download, so it gives you all that information. But, um, yeah. This Galaxy theme is actually quite nice. It's a shame it's not used. Is it used by default on Windows? Yeah, see? Used by default on Windows. I knew that already, but it's just good to to know these things. And that should be it. All right, so I should be able to shut this down. Bring up LibreOffice when the menu decides to let me do it. Here we go. Office Writer. Sorry, this is so slow. A virtual machine. I have to try KVM. See how that. Um, if you guys don't know what that is, it's kernel virtual machine. It runs a kernel powered version of um, Queenie, so it runs quite quickly. And you just go into tools, options, view, galaxy. Okay. And those are the nice ones. And actually make it look exactly like it does in uh, Windows. You just choose the small icons. And there you go. Looks very close to, and if you had the theme here, it would look actually quite nice. Not a big fan of this theme. This is the Rayleigh theme, and no, I'm not very, not very big fan. Anyway, that's basically been a uh, bit of an overview of Linux, Linux Mint. Um, probably one thing I want to show you before we wrap this up is something that I found interesting. I don't know if this is default on Ubuntu, um, but they actually have well, two things. Firstly, is Aptitude is installed. Okay, so you get that. Yep. And the other thing too, as I wanted to show you, um, is if I go into the command line, TTY, and I actually go in, I can actually use root, of course. Um, well, no, not of course. That's what I wanted to actually tell you. Is um, they've installed root, or well, by default root. Ubuntu only has sudo. Um, this has the root password enabled, which is the user's password, interestingly enough. I don't think that's really crash hot, but anyway, it's obviously for home use as opposed to enterprise use. Probably not good, not good practice anyway. And uh, oh, notice these, notice this um, command line is very, very colourful. Very, very colourful. I mean, it means nothing to you guys, mate, perhaps. But I noticed this is very Gentoo-like, if anything. Um, a little bit like that, anyway. So, yeah, anyway. Not that you're going to spend a lot of time in the command line, I imagine, in, uh, in Mint. Not that it's, you know, couldn't be useful to an advanced user. It's just that everything's pretty much set up for you. Except, of course, theming. <laughs> anyway. Uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, presentation of uh, Linux Mint. As I say, I apologise. Uh, I don't know if this is a permanent bug or something with the theming. I'd have to install it to Metal to know, really. That's something I'll look into when I invest in a new hard drive. But uh, anyway, uh, that's pretty much it. Any comments, please leave them. And uh, um, also subscribe if you like the videos that I'm doing. Subscribe. Also, take a look at Twist News. Got some news and, and that sort of and the features in there. And there's also a chess puzzle at the end if you're that way inclined. Anyway, guys. Catch you later, guys and girls, that is, and check you next time. See you, YouTubers.